Good evening, my name is Sharon Fredrickson and I have been asked to tell my story about forgiveness. In May of 2022, I decided to stop drinking alcohol and join AA to help me along the way. I had not been to a point of losing my job or a house or my marriage was failing. However, my daughter and my husband both had spoken to me about my drinking. I would come home from work and have a glass of wine but after a time, it turned into two glasses of wine, and then three. My drinking concerned me as well. When I would pray, I, feel, I could feel God, kind of in here, say to me, if you continue to drink, you won't, have the you won't see the best version of yourself. You won't be able to reach that. I joined AA as they had been around since 1935 and have been successful in getting people to stop drinking. What I found was God leading me to a path of forgiveness that I needed. Let me explain. On March 27th, 2022, when I decided to stop drinking alcohol, in AA we all know the day that we decided to stop drinking alcohol, so I never had a desire to drink again, which is rare. Usually, that's the biggest struggle for an alcoholic, a narcotic um, uh, abuser, is that they, they, they want to drink more. They want to take more. And that was great. This was not typical, as I said, and could only be God's grace. Even though I had no desire to drink, I continued attending meetings and chose a sponsor. Her name was Katie, to help me through the 12 steps. As part of the 12 steps, you work on relationships, particularly where there has been pain. And it's not unusual for alcoholics to have really damaged their relationships in their life. I was discussing with Katie that I had broken away from a friend because she had confided in me that she was having an affair. I told Katie that I walked away from the friendship and she criticized me for judging her. She asked me, did you judge her? Well, I said I told her that I thought it was wrong and damaging to her family and I was uncomfortable being around her and her husband. I didn't judge her, I judged the behavior. She replied, sounds like you judged. That is a slippery slope. The only one who can judge is God. May you find him now. The ending of that line of finding God and finding him now is in AA. It's a, a typical line and it's usually um, said in un, um, under the guise of how it works. Katie also mentioned, you revisit this breakup with her a lot. There must have been something there. I agreed, but said that I felt it would show itself on God's good time. The next relationship was with my sister. We had parted ways when she decided to step out of helping my brothers and I with my elderly mother. One night, my sister and I were discussing why she left. She was trying to explain her, her position, but what happened is she started getting defensive with the questions that I was asking, and I ended up blowing up and losing my temper with her and hanging up the phone. Other than the plans for our mother's funeral, we had not spoken for eight years. I explained to Katie that in my sister's opinion, it is never okay to yell in a discussion regardless of the reason. To which Katie said, but it isn't Sharon. I thought, someone sucked up the oxygen out of the room. What do you mean, it isn't? I replied, she was being very snarky with me and it was extremely frustrating. Katie said, Sharon, your reaction is on you. You own that and nobody else. You must figure that out. She doesn't own how you react. After leaving our meeting that night, I pondered this discussion for a long time. In fact, even as I was writing this, the Holy Spirit has enlightened me and I am understanding more. I was thinking about the fact that no matter what someone does to you, you can't respond with yelling, aggressive behavior, etc. But how do you, I stopped and paused. The Holy Spirit had entered my place of confusion and helped me to understand. 
look at Christ and all that happened to him. He never fought back, never yelled, ranted, or raved, or even called his father to turn these people who crucified him into ashes, which he could have done. You can't nail God to a cross if he doesn't want to be nailed there. He only said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Before I could think about this more, I was struck again. Apparently, the Holy Spirit wasn't done. He never judged the woman at the well or the woman accused of committing adultery that was brought to him by the Pharisees to stone. Instead, he said, let anyone who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Do you want to hear a joke? So the joke goes that these men brought, the Pharisees brought this adulteress to Christ, and he said, let he who has not sinned throw the first stone. And a stone whizzes by, right by his face. And he turns around and he goes, sometimes, Ma, you kind of tick me off. So when the men were all turned away, he didn't judge her, tell her that she did what she did was wrong and that it was uncomfortable to be around her. He simply said, woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go from now on, do not sin any longer. Here I thought I had been wronged and in the right. I wasn't having an affair, but my friend went into a completely different decision direction in our friendship. She wanted like-minded people who didn't question her, and I was so hurt by this. Some of you know me. When have you ever known me not to question things or to give my opinion? I kind of wondered, like, have you been asleep at the wheel? We've been friends for years. But what are you going to do? I thought by telling her that um, what was wrong, um, she would listen to me and change and give up the affair. The situation changed, but it escalated from both sides. And we parted ways with both sides hurt. With my sister, although I found it challenging to hear her words, I had no right to explode into ye and yelling like that. Yelling didn't change the situation and it made it escalate and we parted ways. I'll bet there are times when Christ found it extremely challenging to hear the words of the Pharisees, the people chanting crucify him, and the rantings of people as he hung from the cross, but he never showed it by telling, yelling, or losing his temper. Now was the hard part, asking for forgiveness. It is rather humbling to admit you're wrong. What Katie taught me was powerful. Now, here's the funny thing about asking for forgiveness. Know that people may never forgive you or ask for forgiveness with what they did. However, you must find it in your heart to forgive them. The only time you don't admit, the only time you don't admit to your wrongs is when it will hurt another. For example, let's say somebody, some gentleman says to his wife, well, while I was drinking, I was at a bar and I went home with a woman, dot, dot, dot. You fill in the rest. You get the idea. That would hurt a spouse or significant other terribly. And in this case, it's probably better left unsaid. In addition, when apologizing and asking for forgiveness, you do not go to the other person apologizing and excusing your behavior. For example, I am sorry for yelling when we last spoke. However, if you didn't do what you did, I wouldn't have yelled at you. Or now I have apologized. Are you going to apologize for what you did? That would be asking for forgiveness for all the wrong reasons. You never see or hear Jesus handle it that way. Also, you might not be forgiven. The other person may not ask for forgiveness from you, and you must be ready for that. I ask the Holy Spirit to guide me before each email and or phone call, prepared for the best and the worst. In the end, I sent emails to my friend and sister apologizing for my behavior and asking for forgiveness. From my friend, the forgiveness was given. We haven't gotten back to having a friendship, but I have done the right thing which shows the best version of myself. With my sister, we were able to reconcile, 
After the email, we followed up with a phone call to discuss things further. There were times during the conversation where she was, where what she said hurt. However, the Holy Spirit guided me to keep my mouth shut and to just listen. We started up our relationship again. It wasn't where it was when we parted ways, but we have been with, away from each other for eight years. So it's not going to get fixed overnight. I can tell you that by asking for forgiveness has freed me from obsessing over these events that led me to parting ways with my friend and sister. I believe that it exposed where I wasn't the best version of myself and what God knew I was capable of. It is unsettling when your mind, body, and soul are not in sync with his. You may think, well, I don't have a drinking problem, so how does this help me in the areas of forgiveness? Here is a synopsis of the steps that focus on forgiveness. There are more, and I encourage you to get the AA book, or there is another book that you can learn more about these steps that isn't specific to AA called The 12 Steps for Everyone Who Really Wants Them, Words to Live By, by Jerry Hirschfield, PhD. Here are a few steps that focus on on forgiveness in AA. You make a fearless and moral inventory of yourself. The thing is, even though you you think you were right, like me, you might not be able to let it go, which is indicative that there is something that isn't sitting right. Admit to God and ourselves and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. This is a great thing to go to reconciliation on. Make a list of all the persons that we have harmed and became willing to make amends to them. All. Willing doesn't mean do it. It means willing. You are opening up to the idea of making amends. Made a direct amends to people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them. Wherever possible is a situation where you are not able to get into contact with this person. Maybe it is something that happened 40 years ago and you don't know where to begin to find them or, or possibly they may have died. In cases like these, it helps to write a letter just to get the words out. And remember, you may not be forgiven. They may not even want to speak to you, or they may return your letter unopened. You may not get an apology for their actions, but you are living according to Christ's teachings, and that is what we are trying to achieve. Remember, there can be no peace without forgiveness. Thank you.